When one begins to realize that many of the ancient sites found here upon our planet have, throughout the years of modern study, only ever been attributed to civilizations we have actually been able to study in detail, rather than their true creators, a highly advanced group of individuals, once capable of constructing awe-inspiring structures using unimaginably huge blocks, fortresses perfectly built with stones placed together as if cut to size. These stone structures have come in many shapes and styles, yet undoubtedly the most impressive among the collection is polygonal walls. Many of the most popular are located within Peru, although their fascinating existence spans much further afield. Delphi was once an ancient sanctuary, famous for being home of Pythia, an oracle who was consulted about important decisions throughout the ancient world. Interestingly, the Greeks considered Delphi the navel of the world, with a mysterious stone monument known as the Omphalos of Delphi, having once been placed there to signify this. Located on the southwestern slope of Mount Parnassus within Greece, undoubtedly the most compelling feature of the site and the one we feel indicates the true identity and thus its actual immense age is its polygonal wall that, according to academia, was somehow built by the Greeks from around 510 to 323 BC. However, the site's wall, although rarely academically mentioned, is in fact lost knowledge, or more precisely, an advanced method of ancient construction that we are yet able to explain or unravel. We have long stated that many of the ancient sites around the world were seemingly built prior to some form of reset within human knowledge and development. Structures built with such skill and with such enormous blocks that these surviving remnants may be all that is left to now indicate their once existence. Thankfully, however, due to the unfathomed skill involved, these remaining fragments are, for all intent and purposes, out-of-place artifacts within our own history. Was the entire site merely reoccupied and claimed as another's creation? A claim conveniently allowing academics to avoid appearing out of their depth. Who built Delphi? When was it built? Were the ancient theaters, stadiums, and statues attributed to the Romans and the Greeks actually creations left by a people far older? With such unexplainable features at said locations, we find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. We recently covered the astonishing archaeological discoveries located within the modern-day Turkey. We discussed the unexplained ancient ruins of Gobleki Tepe, clearly a remnant of a far more ancient, far more advanced civilization than academia would ever allow contemplation of. Additionally, and the focus of the last video, the other ancient gem known as Norsen Tepe, a highly complex, thus highly advanced, ancient temple, whose contents indicated no less than 40 additional re-inhabitations of the structure after the original construction, now conveniently hidden under several meters of water, submerged during a dam-building operation. Why this operation was undertaken, or indeed why this site in particular was chosen for flooding, may become apparent with our next place of interest. It seems that some of the sites within Turkey have revealed some extremely well-preserved, extremely ancient artifacts, left by numerous as yet unknown civilizations. And although these finds have seemingly been concealed from mankind, fate is seemingly on our side. Ironically, a site of complete opposite characteristics, having not been touched or re-inhabited for untold millennia, has also been unearthed within Turkey. Alacha Hoyak, a site on the surface perceived to have been a primitive archaeological ruin dating back to 2350 to 2150 BC, over 4,000 years ago. And yet, upon deeper exploration, an analysis seemingly undertaken too late for academia's dating has shown that the site possesses evidence of the same lost technology, 
or more specifically, advanced knowledge of stone construction found at many other ancient, unexplained sites around the Earth, like Sacsayhuaman, a site we also covered previously. It must be clear to everyone that academia's dating of these sites is not accidental. Was the dating too hastily concluded? We would assume that a dating of over 4,000 years is now difficult to accompany with such advanced knowledge of stone carving and construction. Just how old is Alachahoyuk? And the same question as always, based on the unexplainable knowledge involved in its creation, who could have built it?
China's U-22 rover, currently exploring the surface of our moon, has exposed an intriguing discovery, a mysterious object that many are labeling the hut. It is a cube-shaped curiosity, which oddly just appears to be resting upon the moon, as if once placed. In previous videos, we have examined similar anomalies many believe to be obelisks. We can visit other people with their habitation. We can keep track. If there's something very important to be developed from the moon, together we can explore the moon and develop the moon. We should go boldly where man has not gone before. Fly by the comets, visit asteroids, visit the moon of Mars. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object that, that goes around Mars once in seven hours. When people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? With even Buzz Aldrin himself claiming there to be a monolith on Phobos, one of Mars' moons. And there is indeed a mysterious object resting on the surface of this mysterious satellite. A moon which not only appears to be hollow from one side, but is on a decaying orbit which does not make sense, almost as if it were a ghost of the past. Earthly calculations revealing that the moon should have disintegrated into Mars long ago. Yet the moon still exists, along with its mysterious so-called monolith. Yet I digress. The thing that makes these objects so interesting is how they seemingly appear to have once been placed where they have rested for untold millennia. No contact trail, no debris, dust plume, or disturbance at all. And most importantly, no crater of any form. Unfortunately, however, according to Chinese space officials, it may be a long time before the rover reaches the object, if at all. One major reason is that U-22 isn't active most of the time. The solar-powered spacecraft cannot operate during the 14-and-a-half Earth-day-long lunar night, nor for roughly 24 hours after sunrise and before sunset. U-22 also stays offline during lunar noon, as temperatures at that time can reach 127 degrees Celsius. What is this object? Further photographic study and detailed research into its precise location needs to be undertaken. It is an object which we find highly compelling.